to another episode of Cooking with Katie and a Cocktail. It's so stormy and hot and thundering outside and so there is no place I would rather be than cooking with you and having a cocktail on this dark and stormy night. It's the perfect weather for being indoors and cooking with your friends and your family. Um, so thank you for joining us. I'm going to do things a little bit different tonight on Cooking with a, uh, Katie and a Cocktail. All brought to you, by the way, by Nisa's Country Sausage and Jolo Winery and Vineyards. We're going to do the cocktail in just a minute, and I'll explain to you what the cocktail is going to be. But we have some very important steps to take before we get into making our cocktail because tonight on the menu, we're making a panzanella, which you might be thinking, hmm, what's, a, what's panzanella? It's basically bread salad. And if you're like me, I think that anytime bread kicks things off in a recipe, we're gonna, it's gonna be delicious, it's gonna be golden. Um, so panzanella, Italian, pan, pan, bread. Zanella, I think means so bread, and then I think means mixing bowl or mixed salad. So pan zanella. We are using the color, the colors of um, Italy's flag. We have red tomatoes. We have the white of the bread, which I've already toasted right here. And we have, of course, green basil. And I'm very proud to say this was grown in our garden. Fun fact not in one of the pots that we put it in. It was actually, was this one is? That one's from the oh. pot, the other one is the one that's. Okay, so we have our own little herb garden outside and something was happening to our basil in the very beginning. It's all outdoors, it doesn't have a net or anything. It's just growing in some, in some uh, planter pots. And something started eating all of our basil and so we had to pull out one of the plants and I think, I guess Ben, you just like, but it was getting, it was getting like black spots on the leaves yeah. and stuff like that. And so we thought it was just trash. And so I took it out and I just <laughs> threw it out and I was going to mow it over later. And it just, yeah, our kids are here this evening. Yeah. You can hear them in yeah, the background they're yelling. They're screaming, even though we said, here are your fish sticks <laughs> and your noodles. And they have headphones on watching a movie. So, um, we said best behavior. And yet here we are. What? exactly three minutes into our uh, live filming and they're screaming. One's gonna come through the door in just one second, so get ready. Right there. Yeah. Um, it's the fun of Facebook Live, isn't it? Let's see who it is. Yes? Mom, uh, uh, the movie came off. Oh, the movie came off? Okay, yeah. you wanna say hi to all my friends on Facebook? Go over here. Come here, you wanna say hi to everyone? Go over my mommy and say. say hi. Hi. Come here, tell everybody hello. Hello. Okay, you're gonna go back to your movie now? No, oh, but it's not on here. Okay, Daddy's gonna go fix it for you. Okay. Okay. Anyway, where were we? Uh, so, <laughs> the basil. We're using the green from Italy's flag, the basil. And uh, that very weird long story about the basil, we figured it out. This basil is thriving, and of course, when you clip it, it's just, it goes nuts. And um, of course, we love the rain, so. I'll take the rain any day to keep our, our herb garden going. The reason we're gonna make the cocktail in just one second is because I have, um, I took one loaf of, in this case, I'm using a sourdough bread. Just bought it um, from, I went to the farmer's market and couldn't really find exactly what I was looking for. Um, I wanted a bread that did not have seeds on the top um, and I wanted a either a French loaf or an Italian uh, rustic bread, um, but I found a sourdough. So. I just took the, the sourdough loaf, cut it up into very uneven pieces, which if I were on a for real cooking show, I probably would be docked a million points because none of my pieces are the same, but it's okay. Uh, tossed it with some olive oil and a little bit of salt, put it on a baking sheet and baked it in the oven just to make our own croutons. Um, so that has already been done because they have to be at room temperature. I've also taken for the panzanella, I've taken a pound and a half of tomatoes that were grown over at our neighbor's house, Mrs. Barbara. Thank you very much. Pound and a half of tomatoes and cut those up. And in what I've been doing, I'm gonna use the juice from the cut up tomatoes, put the tomatoes in here, put um, about half of a teaspoon of salt on there to really get the juices coming out. 
and I'm gonna use the juices from the tomato for part of the dressing for the panzanella. So we're gonna take our tomatoes, and I'm just gonna put these over to the side for a moment. And I don't know how much um, juice from the tomatoes you get is gonna vary wildly from tomatoes to tomatoes. I think what makes this recipe so successful are juicy, sun-ripened, perfect summertime tomatoes, really good olive oil, like my friend Ina Garten would say, and um, fresh herbs. So to the tomato juices, and then you can see all these things here, right? Uh, uh so for the most part. most part. We'll see them as they go in. Okay, so to the tomato juices, we're gonna add three tablespoons of red wine vinegar. I did replace our red wine vinegar today. <laughs> um, the other one was in our cabinet for a very long time. And um, look, I know it's vinegar. I know that it doesn't necessarily go bad. And some of the vinegars have the mother yeah. with them. If you don't know what the, what the mother is, it's the same idea with kombucha, the mother. Uh, Google it. I'll leave that one to you. Sorry. Um, it's a great thing, it's a beautiful thing. I'm glad that we have it. I'm glad that I just can't. It's something that's very uh, tangy and um, earthy. It's just I can't really get down with kombucha or with the mother. But um, the red wine vinegar that I bought today did not contain the mother. It had been strained. So uh, three tablespoons of red wine vinegar. We're going to be using, remember, really great fruity olive oil. I'm uh, gonna be adding six tablespoons of olive oil and we're making a dressing, essentially. So, can you hear that? Can you hear our children going nuts? Has anybody commented yet on that? Uh, not on the, well, I haven't gotten through it yet. because Like, hey, I'm, pipe down? Yeah, I'm just trying to catch up with every, everything three. that's... Four. Don't see that we're gonna have to get a laptop. <laughs> and six. All right, so we're gonna do six tablespoons of olive oil in here. We're gonna whisk it in. I'm using a California cuvee, a mild but very delicious, fruity-ish uh, olive oil. I think what's making them extra loud today is the fact that they have headphones on, so they. <laughs> They <laughs> don't know how loud they're being. Put this right here. Do some freshly cracked pepper, and then we're going to put the croutons in after we get it all whisked together and let them sit while we make our um, our cocktail. I just want to get this all together. How's your week been, everybody? I always look forward to Thursdays so much because we get to welcome you into our home and you get to see all the chaos. Uh, we get to cook together, which is fun, trying new things and sharing old recipes or new recipes. As always, leave a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see on the cooking show. Share your recipes. What do you, you know, this recipe came because someone last week was saying, please share some recipes for some summer salads because it is too hot to be turning on the oven. And we, here we are. So thank you for the uh, suggestion. All right, to our salad dressing, we're gonna add all of these beautiful croutons. And the idea here is that they're gonna soak up all of it. And they're gonna get softer, softer. They're not gonna get totally mushy, although when it, it sits for uh, an extended period of time, it will. But it's flavor. It's gonna soak up all the flavor. Okay, enough of that. Just do like this. Make sure that I get all the crumbs too. Crouton salad with for real, just all croutons. I didn't do it the cooking show way. I should have done it like this so you could see them all go, sorry. You get the point. All right. So give those a light toss, make sure they're all coated in the dressing. Now, you don't have to add any uh, greens to this other than the basil if you don't want to. I'm gonna add a little bit of arugula, it's light, peppery. And the baby greens are really tender. Not adding a whole bunch as you can see, just um, about a cup or so. But that's gonna be later on because when we assemble it, the croutons are going to absorb all of this liquid. 
We're just gonna let it sit for 10 minutes or so, however long it takes us to make, make our cocktail. With all the gabbing I'm doing, it could be like 20, 30 minutes. All right, so on to our cocktail. We didn't want to turn on the oven today, so we're making a nice, cool, refreshing summer salad, the panzanella. And I thought, well, let's go with the Italian theme here. What kind of cocktail should we make? And I have been seeing Negronis everywhere. It seems like it's the hottest cocktail right now. If you are familiar with a Demo Wears Prada, Stanley Tucci, he went viral in a video <laughs> that he did making a Negroni. It's because Stanley Tucci, sorry Ben, I know that my husband is my production guy, but he's an attractive man, he's fit, and he's shaking his cocktail, the cocktail shaker, making a cocktail for his wife, and so I think he went viral because lots of women were like, this is hot, and we don't know why. <laughs> so I thought, I want to try the Negroni, I've never had one before, so we did some research, Found out that the Negroni came from a man, I believe he was in... Uh, he, was in he was in Italy. He was in Italy, came to the United States, mm. and was drinking the Americano, which includes Campari. I think it was, I think it was in Italy. Italy, came uh, to the United States. I think States. it was a... For some reason, I want to say like an Irishman in Italy... His last name was Negroni. Camille Negroni was his okay. name. So somebody's got somebody's gonna let us know. Someone is gonna let us know. <laughs> but the Americano included Campari and it included vermouth. Yes. And it also included soda water. And this man, Negroni, went into his bar when he returned home to whichever country, and he said, give me something stronger than the Americano. I want it to taste like the Americano, but I want it to be stronger. And the bartender said, all right, fine. So took the Campari and the vermouth and added gin. We did a lot of research on this recipe. Started yesterday. We made our very first Negroni, and I swear to you, I sprouted hairs on my chest. It was so <laughs> strong. It's all liquor. So we're doing a little bit of a variation because I woke up with a pounding headache. It took me a while to, I am a wimp when it comes to that because I don't drink all that much liquor. I like a cocktail, but I like you know some mixer in there. Um, and so it was, it was a lot to handle. So we're gonna kind of make it a spritzer if you will, an agroni spritzer. So we are going to start, and I'm gonna make one, of course, for my production guy. My husband insisted that we chill these beautiful coupe glasses. So I have some ice in there. I'm gonna put them in the fridge, but there's no room. I'm making a cocktail here. You wanna make it? Y'all don't see the looks I'm getting behind uh, the camera, but there was a look. Okay, so our vineyards to pick some up soon. It wasn't ready yet. They were doing some bottling last week, and so it wasn't ready for us to have. But when it is, we're gonna be making some cocktails with it. Sweet vermouth. We're gonna add one ounce sweet vermouth into our cocktail shaker. And we're making this for two. We are making this for two cocktails, and the reason um, that it really is, it's typically one ounce Campari, one ounce gin, one ounce sweet vermouth, but I'm just gonna make one and split it because what we're gonna do, and I forgot to grab this out of the fridge, let me grab that. We're going to add some club soda on top to make it more of a spritzer. And I guess that this is kind of like a Negroni and an Americano combined. And, and one extra secret ingredient, which we'll add if we don't forget it. Yeah, probably will. All right, so in here was one ounce of sweet, sweet vermouth. vermouth. We're going to add one ounce of Campari. And if you are not familiar with Campari, I really wasn't all that familiar with it. I heard of it and knew that it was a bitter. It tastes a lot like some lemon or uh, orange rinds. Well, and and it's bitter. And yeah, and it has stuff. the same, it, it kind of does the same thing to your mouth that, imagine taking a bite out of an orange. 
kind of rind. The rind kind of makes you bitter, pucker up, bitter, um, and does have that orangey, orange rind taste to it. I don't know that I'm really selling it in a positive way, but it's good. But a certainly, I think, an acquired taste, um, and you just have to find the way you like to drink it, really, as with all liquor. Uh, and then we're gonna do an ounce of uh, gin. And gin, very herby, juniper berries. Okay. And then our secret ingredient is, and we used this in a cocktail not so long ago, we're gonna use one ounce of thyme simple syrup that my husband made. We just keep it in the fridge because you never know when you're gonna need it for a cocktail. So one ounce of thyme simple syrup to really kind of cut the bitterness of the Campari. I'm sure the people who love the bitterness of Campari are like, what are you doing? But this is our cocktail, okay? So one ounce of that. Now to our cocktail shaker, Gonna add some ice cubes. Let me know what y'all think. Do you guys like Campari? Is that one of your go-tos? Do y'all you, you big cocktail drinkers? I mean, we're having a blast coming up with some new ones. It's a lot of fun. And also, by the way, the fun thing about um, Campari, I did find out that it used to be, in this beautiful red color, used to be made before there were dyes and preservatives and stuff. Uh, the red would come from a certain kind, and I don't know which kind, a bug. A bug, an insect. And so now they just use dye. This a bug would be kind of fun, kind of like the wine, uh, the uh, worm in, a, in tequila. Mm, your aunt uh, Martha says Campari and OJ. Hi, Aunt Marty. That sounds, sounds bitter, but I bet I'm thinking the sweetness. This is not sexy like Stanley Tucci. <laughs> I just realized I went on and on and on about how sexy Stanley Tucci was, and then here I am like, yeah. Okay, that's enough. I'm starting to sweat in here. All right, now we're gonna share this evenly in our beautiful coupe glasses. Tell you what, I feel like a real adult with this coupe glass. I don't know why, I don't know what it is, but it makes me feel very adultish, adulty, which is a very non-adult way of saying I feel grown. See how pretty? How am I doing, funny? Looks pretty good to me. Yeah. All right. Last little bit there. And now I'm gonna top it with some soda water. Makes it bubbly, makes it fizzy, makes it cocktaily. And I would just say, behind the camera, my husband's going, that's it. Like, all right, make yours less stout. Make mine less stout, yours can be stout. <laughs> All right, and of course, you could garnish this with some beautiful preserved lemon. I do have a friend who uh, is has given us some preserved lemon. I just wasn't thinking about it, but that would be very pretty here. Or some orange peel to garnish because it's such a gorgeous cocktail. All right, here you are, Benjamin. I just want to have a little bit more in it. Thank you. Give that one to you. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, Negroni spritzer if you will. Cheers, everyone. Yep. Mm. That's good. Mm. I won't be sprouting any more hairs in my chest. Yeah, definitely not as, um, oh, not as strong as it was yesterday when we made the first. And we started drinking them the, when we were practicing the Negroni. And um, after like the third sip, I thought, wow, I guess I could do this, and I realized it's because I think all the taste buds had been burned off my mouth. Um, but this is great. The club soda, I, I really enjoy. So great cocktail. It's refreshing, perfect for um, a before dinner drink, and it goes really nicely with the salad that we're gonna be making. So let's get back to that, the panzanella. We do have the 
croutons. Oh, and they still have a little bit of crispiness to them, but the inside of the bread has absorbed all of the olive oil and the red wine and the red wine vinegar. We did see that. And the uh, the black pepper. And now it's all just a matter of assembling this salad, which is served immediately so that the bread doesn't get super, super mushy. And I think we have so much, we're definitely gonna be sharing with some neighbors tonight, I think. Wish I could be sharing with you all. So just start having people over to, to the house so that we could all cook together and that I can share with you. We are going to add to our panzanella salad these beautiful tomatoes. Woo, they're still giving off some of their juice. Again with the, I'm sorry, like that. You do it like that. Beautiful tomatoes. I'm gonna add some very thin cucumber that has been peeled, sliced uh, lengthwise, the seeds taken out, and then sliced as thin as you can get it. That's the way that I like to eat them. If you like bigger chunks, you can make bigger chunks. I'm on tire. Oh, okay. You need to go take a nap? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Where are you going, bud? I don't I don't do that. Also going to add <laughs> one shallot that has been peeled and has been sliced very thinly. Mom, can I have dessert? <laughs> you may have dessert, but I'm not finished with cooking with Katie at a cocktail. <laughs> All right. Going to mix some of this up. Again, I probably needed a bigger bowl. I always feel like I do. Okay, I'm gonna add some mozzarella to this. Now, I don't know if this is a typical thing to be adding to panzanella, but I think that, first of all, they're really cute, these little balls of mozzarella. And again, in our salad, so we get to add whatever we want. I think that some fresh peaches could be great in here, along with the tomatoes. Um, I think you don't have to add the arugula if you don't want to, but I'm going to just to have some more greens other than the basil. Yeah. So I'm going to add some of them. Dessert. 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 I'm gonna also add some of the arugula. I'll tell you, this this is a uh, this is an overflowing bowl. All right, and then before we finish up, I'm gonna take some of this basil. Oh, there's just never enough counter space, is there? Take some basil from our garden. It's always great when you get to use some of your own herbs. And I like to julienne it. So I just try to stack the leaves a little bit and then I'll find a very big leaf at the end to sort of wrap it all together. I'm glad I'm showing you a couple little tricks. We're gonna use about a uh, quarter cup of basil. And let's see, really big leaf here. Kind of put it all in without bruising or damaging it. Although, when you start to uh, rough it up a little bit, it releases all of the delicious basil-y smells. All right. So wrapped it all up, and now I'm just doing some julienne slices here. Whoa. It's got my nail there. All right, and this is just in ribbons, so I'm gonna add that on top. Would not be delicious with nail in there. Okay, all right. Then really should have gotten a bigger bowl. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Could you maybe help me find a bigger one real quick? Yeah. This is the biggest glass one I think I have, so get a really great look at it right now because uh, it's gonna probably have to go into a wooden bowl or go into a um, a bowl that you won't be able to see through. But so take a look, beautiful colors. Yeah, I'm not gonna attempt to mix this one, but I will take a sip of my cocktail. Mm-hmm. Perfect. All right, so in this great big bowl 
this goes. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. It smells so good and summery and fresh. Now you can use your salad scoopers to toss it all together. Again, anytime bread is the main component in a salad, a crouton salad, a panzanella, I'm in. And how easy, this was so easy. It's perfect for a quick summer meal. You can do a lot of the prep work ahead of time by toasting your croutons, by uh, cutting up your tomatoes and straining them to get that juice to work in for the vinaigrette. And what a fun cocktail too. So that was it, everybody. I will plate it up for you so you can see. And for Colleen. Yeah, my sister loves this part. She's yeah, like, she's not, I don't think she's play. watching. Molly's, Molly's watching. Hello. I love when my family tunes in because we don't live close by, so it's nice that we get to connect like this, and I get to connect with all of you. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. All right. So there you go. Happy summer, everyone. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Oh. Oh my goodness, I can't even believe I almost forgot. It's the spritzer. One moment. We do have a Mises prize pack. So sorry, I cannot even believe I forgot. Mises Country Sausage wants to give one of you a glorious prize pack. Everybody that has been commenting tonight, your name went into my pool hat. Random hat that we had laying around. All right, so all of your names are in here. Okay, you used all the good bowls. I did use all the bowls. And then I'm gonna pull one out. You let's see who it is. Probably, you know. I was writing really fast too. Okay. Beth Green! Beth, congratulations! You just got a Nieces Country Sausage prize pack. Y'all, we'll see you next week. Thanks.